The Corsair 1 Pro 1080 Ti fits some monstrous gaming hardware into a tiny PC, with GPU and CPU liquid cooling, an NVMe SSD, VR support, and whisper quiet operation. Click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! What's up guys and welcome to my second ever Radeon RX Vega review. A couple days ago I benchmarked and overclocked the Vega 56, and today I'll be doing the same with the Vega 64. The Vega 64 air-cooled non-limited edition is theoretically $499 at retail, which is the price I'll be using for comparison today, so the nearest competition from Nvidia is the GTX 1080. The Vega 56 retails for $399, again, if you can find it, but as for the Vega 64 that I'm actually testing today, just FYI, this is the brushed metal finish limited edition version that you can only get if you purchase a Radeon pack, but the performance between this one and the 499 version should be the same. So we can cross compare, I will be using the same testing setup that I used for the Vega 56. Test bench includes an Intel Core i7-7700K CPU at 4.8GHz, a Gigabyte Aorus Z270X Gaming 7 motherboard, a Corsair H110 280mm all-in-one liquid cooler. For memory, I have a 2x8GB kit of Kingston HyperX Predator DDR4 3200 memory running at cast latency 16, and for storage, I have the Windows 10 64-bit OS on an Intel 600p 512GB NVMe SSD, and the games on an external SanDisk Ultra 2 1TB SSD connected via USB 3.0. Power is provided by the Corsair HX1000i 1000W 80 plus platinum power supply. I'm on an open test bed. Of course, I need a GTX 1080 to compare to, so I've chosen the EVGA GTX 1080 for the win ICX2. Again, I skipped the GTX 1080 Founders Edition for this manufacturer overclocked EVGA card, which peaks at 1974 MHz under load. Anyone who's running a 1080 at Founders Edition speeds is leaving performance on the table, and there's no shortage of overclocking guides and pre-overclocked models like this available since the card's been out for over a year already. Besides, I overclocked the Vega 64 too, so I think that's pretty fair. The GTX 1080 benchmarks are run with the latest GPU driver from NVIDIA, that's 385.28 now. I'm using Hardware Info 64 and a launch day version of the AMD Radeon settings utility to monitor statistics. I overclocked the Vega 64 with Radeon settings as well, setting the frequency slider to plus 10% and maxing out the voltage at 1200. I bumped the 8 gigs of HBM2 memory from 945 to 1050 megahertz. I set the same aggressive fan curve that I used with the Vega 56, maxing out at 4500 RPM, and I set the power limit to plus 50%. Software worked a little bit more smoothly this time around, and the GPU was operating at 1792 megahertz, at least as far as I could tell. For benchmarks, I'm including the Vega 64 in turbo mode, but otherwise it's stock, the Vega 64 with my overclock, the EVGA GTX 1080, the Galax GTX 1070, and the Vega 56 with the overclock numbers from my launch day video. Let's start off with 3 d Mark Firestrike Extreme, and here we can see the Vega 64 as well as Overclock coming in with some pretty good scores. The GTX 1080 kind of slips in right between them, at least when it comes to the overall score. Moving over to Firestrike Ultra, we can see pretty similar results. The Vega 64, especially Overclock, is still winning, although the 1080 is close behind. Moving over to 3 d Mark Time Spy, the DirectX 12 test, and here we can see the GTX 1080 has come roaring back, and the graphics score is beating the Vega 64 even while Overclocked. Finally, we have 3D Mark VR Mark Blue Room, a VR specific test. And here again, the 1080 performed very well, beating the Vega 64 in both stock and overclocked speeds. Let's move into some actual games though, starting with For Honor at 1920 by 1080. Here again, we can see the GTX 1080 is doing a really good job beating out the Vega 64 even while overclocked. And I also want to point out the Vega 64 non overclocked is getting crept up on by the Vega 56 while well overclocked. Moving over to 2560 by 1440, we can see more of the same, although the Vega 64 does make up a bit more ground while overclocked. And then finally, at 4K, the 1080 is still hanging on to that lead, although just barely. Let's move on to GTA 5. This was a benchmark that I was surprised AMD didn't actually provide numbers for, and it's kind of obvious why now, because this is a title where the Vega has seemingly more of a disadvantage compared to the 1080 than it does in other titles. We see a 20 plus or more frame rate lead at 1920 by 1080. We're seeing a 15 to 20 frames per second lead, even over Vega 64 overclocked at 2560 by 1440. And when we move up to 4K, the numbers get a little bit smaller, so the margins seem a little bit shorter, but still a 10 FPS lead uh, on the Vega 64 overclocked. 
Moving on to Overwatch, a very fun game to play, and at 1080, I'm trying to focus on some high frame rate options for people who might be playing at 1080 on high frame rate monitors. We can see that all the cards here are actually able to achieve pretty high frame rates, and this is at 100% render scaling, so you could get even better than this thanks to Overwatch's uh, graphics options and how they can be moved around. But again, we're seeing the 1080 overall maintaining a higher frame rate. Moving up to 2560 by 1440, again, we see a bit of a lead. It does narrow a little bit. I think the Vega 64 OC has a bit of a sweet spot here when it comes to the 1440 resolution. But then we move over to 3840 by 2160. We see the lead shrink even more, although the GTX 1080 is still winning by just a couple frames per second. Our next game is Metro Last Light, still a very difficult game to run, and at 1080 we can see it's a little bit more of a battle, although the GTX 1080 does win yet again, pulling ahead with an average frame rate of 154 frames per second versus the Vega 64's 150. At 2560 by 1440, again we see the Vega 64 overclock uh, come a little bit closer to the GTX 1080, but still falling away by about 5 frames per second, and then at 3840 by 2160 or 4K, more of the same, it's just very difficult for the Vega 64 to keep up with the 1080, especially since I'm using a manufacturer overclock version. My last two titles are DirectX 12 titles, starting with Rise of the Tomb Raider at 1920x1080. We see the GTX 1080 winning again with an average frame rate of 126.7, maintaining a very nice minimum frame rate there as well. 2560x1440, the GTX 1080 wins with an average frame rate of 86.9 compared to the Vega 64 OC's 77.5. And then at 4K 3840x2160, the GTX 1080 still wins, although again by just a point or a point and a half, 45.4 average frames per second versus the Vega 64 OC's 44. And our final test, Civilization VI in DirectX 12 mode. At 1920x1080, all of the cards coming within about one frame per second of each other, so a bit of a wash here, but about 88 or 89 frames per second. At 2560x1440, again, we're in the 86 to 89 frames per second range, although you could say the 1080 wins since it did have the highest score. And finally, at 4K 3840x2160, the Vega 64 OC comes out with a win. So there it is, there's its big crowning achievement there, 77.4 frames per second compared to the GTX 1080's 73.8. So if you like Civ 6 at a high resolution, apparently the Vega 64 is the card for you. Now as was the case with the Vega 56, with the Vega 64, we must look at power draw as well as performance numbers because that is an important part of the equation. Vega in general actually has a lot of cool features for maximizing power efficiency, and I am using none of them in favor of getting the most performance possible out of the cards, so please bear that in mind. Unfortunately though, just like the Vega 56, the power consumption story is not favorable for the Vega 64, and the GTX 1080 is just running much more efficiently. As for temperatures, the EVGA GTX 1080 has the benefit of a third party cooler, which does give it an advantage here, so bear that in mind. The Vega 64 card got up into the 80s, and overclocking only made things a bit warmer from there. And then taking a look at the frequencies these cards are running at, Vega 64 impressed me by remaining quite stable, up to 1,792 MHz. This actually gave me a lot of hope for future third-party designs, as well as water cooling options, but balancing high frequencies with power draw will continue to be a challenge for this GPU. So now that my initial round of Vega testing is complete, I think I have a pretty good handle on the performance expectations that people should have. The Vega 56 is a very nice counter to the GTX 1070, albeit a bit late, while the Vega 64 faces a tougher challenge against the GTX 1080. In pretty much every test I ran, apart from Civ 6 and a couple of those synthetics, the Vega 64 falls behind the GTX 1080, and that's even while overclocked, and while drawing more power to push fewer frames. Now if you want to look at silver linings though, I think there are a few things that should be pointed out. First off, monitors. There's a ton of free sync monitors that are way more affordable than Nvidia's G-Sync alternatives, and now that there's actually some good GPUs that can actually push frame rates on them, like this ASUS MG279 2560x1440 144Hz IPS FreeSync monitor video coming soon, and there is also some next level technology built into these cards, so check the description for some links to full articles that goes over stuff like the high bandwidth cache controller and power savings features that can keep a Vega running cool and quiet 24-7 if you're willing to give up a little performance. There's also the fine wine thing, the idea that AMD GPUs tend to gain more performance over time as they age and drivers mature, which is worth a mention I suppose, but I hesitate to call that a selling point since it's speculative and we're not sure it's going to happen this generation as well. Ultimately, there's a niche audience of FreeSync monitor having 
closed headphone wearing gamers who live in temperate climates with access to cheap renewable electricity who are really, really excited that Vega is finally out. And for the rest of us, the Vega 56 is a very nice alternative to the GTX 1070. And I'm sure we're gonna hear more from Vega 64 when third party designs launch. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, turn on those notifications too if you don't wanna miss my next video. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out if you enjoyed this one. And uh, thanks for watching as always. We'll see you guys next time.